Hello and welcome to Therapy Express with Rosanna. Thank you so much for watching. I was recently asked to do a topic on infidelity and that is a pretty huge topic. Infidelity is any romantic relationship that exists outside of your marriage or partnership. Surprisingly, I was surprised when I found this out, 50 to 60% of couples suffer some infidelity in their relationship. So I'm glad that this person asked me to do it because it is an, an important topic. Some women have considered infidelity uh, more painful than rape or even abuse. That's how much of an impact infidelity can have on a person and a relationship. Infidelity seems to be growing. There are no laws against this. There used to be laws against it, but uh, they got taken off the books. So now there are websites where you can go and find someone to have an affair with. There are companies that protect your privacy if you want to have an affair and even books written to help you have successful affairs. So it is out there and it can happen to anybody. So we're going to talk about ways to safeguard your relationship from falling prey to having an affair. Infidelity can happen when the intimate emotional needs are met outside of the marriage. That's why it's so important to keep those intimate emotional needs within the marriage. As soon as you step out, that's when things can happen and it can be very subtle. It can happen with conversation or affection, recreational outings. You can be friends with a couple and go out in foursomes and, and just start enjoying each other and that can start building something. It can be so subtle that you might not even realize what's happening and one day you feel like you're in love with this other person and you are shocked. That's how how little but little it can grow. Usually when the affair starts, it, it's almost like you become addicted. It's like an alcoholic and you rationalize it in much the same way that you would an alcohol addiction. You can find all kinds of reasons. There's lying about it. There is, I can stop seeing that person anytime I want. It's nothing. It, that's how it can go, but it is something. And if you want to stop an alcohol addiction, you stop drinking. You don't say, well, I'm going to, you know, have a drink every couple of days. The same with an affair. If you've had an affair, the best thing to do to survive your marriage is to end it completely to do whatever you can, never to see that person again. Most marriages don't recover. They might stay together, but they don't recover. That's how deep the wound is. So what are some of the safeguards that you as a couple can take to prevent this from happening in your marriage? Remember, 50 to 60% of the couples have affairs. So let's get to some of the safeguards that you can start implementing immediately in your relationship. Number one, you maintain your romantic relationship by keeping those intimate emotional needs met. Do not go outside of your marriage to meet those needs. Number two, don't have someone else outside of the marriage of the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever it is, fill those needs for you. Because as soon as you start going outside, it's too risky. Anything can happen. Remember what I said, it starts, doesn't start with sex. That's rarely the motivation to have an affair. It starts with conversation and then affection and then little coffee dates. So it seems very innocent and it doesn't feel like it's going to turn into anything like like an affair, but one day, boom, there it is. And you, at that point, are so addicted, you feel helpless to do anything about it. Number three, be radically honest about your feelings if you start to feel attracted and have feelings for somebody else. That's the first little sign, and you can nip this in the bud by talking to your mate and being honest and saying, listen, I'm having some feelings that I'm not comfortable with for, you know, this person and 
I want to talk about it because that means that there's something lacking in our relationship and I want to address this. So make sure that if you start feeling very attracted to somebody, you start looking forward to seeing that person. Maybe it's a friend of the family. Maybe you're going out in foursomes and, and it's the husband um, and the wife and now you're feeling very attracted to the husband or vice versa. And now you start looking forward to these dates, you start planning them. Okay, that already is a sign that potential risky behavior is coming. So make sure that you talk to your spouse and if need be, don't see that couple anymore. Remember, you're trying to protect the integrity of your marriage and anything you can do to save it is what you must do. Number four, if there is someone, maybe at work, maybe at school, wherever you are, that you find very attractive and you're starting to feel something that um, isn't right, avoid that person like the plague. Because the attraction is the first little step. And let's say they're in your class or they work next to you in the office and now you're sitting next to them and remember conversation. That's how it starts. Hey, how was your weekend? Hey, it's fine. Hey, let me show you my pictures. And it starts like that. So if you are feeling very attracted to that person, avoid them. Try not to be alone with that person or start intimate conversations with them because one thing will lead to the other. So avoid them like the plague. Don't have them in your life at all. Number five, believe that it can happen to you. Do not get cocky and very confident that no, I have all the faith and trust in my husband or wife. It's never going to happen. Do not think that. It can happen. Let me remind you, 50 to 60% of couples have affairs. So this is more than half. So yes, it can happen. And if you're not thinking about it, talking about it, and knowing that it's a possibility, then you are going to get shocked if it does. A lot of people don't even believe when they find out that the husband or wife has had an affair. They're blindsided. They have no clue. That's because they never even thought about it. I'm not saying be suspicious, start looking through the phones and texting or email. Don't, not that. I mean, start having honest conversations with your spouse. Make sure that your intimate emotional needs are being met. That's where it starts. When those go away, that's when there's that little door that comes open and anything can happen. That's when. So make sure that you have that, those conversations with your spouse. Now, can a couple recover from an affair? Can you forgive that person? Can you forget about it? Chances are no. You are not going to forget about it. Most couples who suffer from an affair do not recover. They might stay together, but they're not going to recover. This is going to be the thorn forever in their sides. So what can you do if you can't forgive and you can't forget, what can you do? Well, uh, there are compensations. There are things that the person who had the affair can do and that in itself can start to rebuild the relationship because once trust is broken, it is broken. It is like dropping a glass on the floor and it shatters. Try to put all those little pieces back together. It is very, very tough to do that. So compensation is about the best thing that you can do. So how do you do that? All right. So steps to recovery. Number one, never, ever, ever see your lover again. Whatever that entails. You need to quit your job. Yeah, you might have to quit your job if you want to keep your marriage. You need to drop out of school or take another class. Yeah, you might have to. Whatever you have to do. Remember, you have a lot of making up to do here. And even when you do so, it's going to be very hard to gain that person's trust because remember what I said, this is one of the most painful things you can do to a person. So never see that person again. No texting, no phoning, no emailing, no running to them in the corner for closure, whatever it is. No, it's over. Done. Number two, expect that there is going to be moodiness and depression and withdrawal for at least three to six months. 
a lot of people start thinking, come on, get over it. You know, I'm okay now. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. But that person is so wounded that it's going to take a long time for their hearts to recover from a pain like that. So you got to give them some leeway. Let them have the space. They want to be moody and depressed. Let them have it. They deserve it after what they've been through. Remember, you are the person that created the thing. And no, maybe you didn't create it alone, alone because both of you are responsible in your partnership. But the person that strayed did stray, and that person is the one that's causing the other one a lot of pain. So give them that space, three to six months, just to kind of like, can I make it? Can I not make it? You know, let's work on this. So give them that. They deserve that. Now, number three, expect them to bring things up, to be in a bad mood, to continuously ask you questions. Expect that. But here's the thing. If you decide to stay together, the marriage can work. It really can. And you might not believe me, but it can be stronger than it ever was because this can give you the opportunity to work on what was wrong with the marriage to begin with. What made you stray? So if you can figure that out and work on your marriage for at least two years, invest everything that you have into strengthening that marriage, after about year two, chances are that the trust will have come back and that your marriage can gain the strength again to, to persevere. It can happen. I've talked to many people and clients and other people that I know and they've had situations or know of people who've had situations and they've survived. The couples have survived. It's not going to be easy. I'm not saying it's like a little walk in the park. No, it's going to take a lot of work and the person, uh, the victim of the affair is going to have to at some point say, okay, I'm going to trust this. I want it to work and I'm going to let it go in as much as I can and not keep bringing things up because that's death for the marriage. So if you want it to work, you have to say, yes, I'm going to give my best and I'm going to work and I'm going to focus all my energies on making it better. What was my part in it? What was your part in it? And look at it and create something beautiful out of that. Okay. I hope this was helpful, you guys. I know that it's a very tough topic, but it can be a success if all the effort is put into making it so. All right. Thank you so much for watching today. Subscribe, turn on your notifications, and look for me next week. Until then, make every moment count. Bye.